Hi, I'm Mark Lowe and welcome to the Photographer Academy and today we're joined in the gallery by Alex from Digital Lab in How the you UK. Mark? Good to be here. Where, whereabouts is the lab based? Let's start off straight away. Yeah, it's based up in Newcastle, so a bit of a long poke down here. Uh, but yeah, based in Newcastle since 1949. Am I allowed to go way I? Way I. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Wales anyway. Thank generally. you very much. Yeah. Look, we're doing a little bit of a virtual trade show because basically everywhere in photography is closed yeah, aren't they? You know, as far as events are concerned is really not so much as photographers it must be very frustrating for a company like yours not being able to get out there with your product to show photographers old and new kind of what you do and what you sell and things absolutely like. i mean we really rely on these sort of shows because it's a physical product and people need to see it's it's like when you're having samples in your studio for your clients photographers need to touch feel see you know, see the textures, see the mouldings and stuff like that. That's what we rely on. And especially with new products that we're wanting to bring out, it doesn't have the same effect if you're trying to launch it on a website. Because believe me, I, I'm not a photographer myself. I cannot photograph the qualities of a fine art print rather than someone being able to touch it. It's not comparable. So yeah, can't wait to get back out there. Very good. Well, thanks for bringing all your kind of goodies down anyway for us to have a look at today. Okay. Very, very nice and beautiful photography. So uh, from me to your photographer clients, very well yeah. done, beautiful <laughs> ones really. Um, I thought we'd kind of just talk through some products. Uh, I think we should kind of look at the photography, whether you're a photographer that's a pro, mm -hmm. in other words, selling the likes of por a portrait or wedding photography for the wall. And then we should also look at the kind of the keen photographer who's printing up those special images to actually go on display, perhaps in their own home and things really, if that's okay with you. Yep. So let, let's kind of talk about the pro. So you're a new trade par a partner with the Photographer Academy, so welcome. Uh, the good news is that you do very, very similar kind of designs as some other products that we kind of, Mark Clegorn uses in fact. Yeah, yeah. One of them is the vid vintage you call this, isn't it? Uh, one is the uh, Faro. The Faro, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm well, getting the names uh, now, yeah. yeah. Fiesta yeah. and basically the Momo. Yeah. Yeah. So but I've I've learned them all kind of everything, yeah. <laughs> and um, as far as the kind of the looks and the feels, as far as premium products are concerned, these two are pretty much a premium product. Sure. Mo Momo and the vintage, pretty much at the higher end of the price bracket. Yes. Yeah? yeah, yeah, that's correct. And I mean it's because, like you say, you need to offer something that's across the spectrum of photography. Um, you'll have clients that are prepared to spend thousands and thousands of pounds, and you'll have others that are a little bit more budget-minded sort of thing. So whilst you still want to offer a high-end product, sometimes you can go a little bit above and beyond and offer something really special. So this is things like the Fine Art Natural and the Vintage, which is this option here. That is a, um, a G-Clear print, so a specialist 12-color G-Clear print there. And we actually coat this in a specialist varnish. So because it's a really tactile textured paper, we don't want to lose that by putting any glaze or anything like that in front yeah, yeah. of it. So we use six coats of a G-Clear varnish with a UV filter in there. Um, and that represents uh, dust and scratch uh, marks and stuff like that. But it retains that beautiful texture. Of the and the, sharp, uh, the sharpness, in fact, mm. is absolutely key as well. Yeah, it? Yeah. it hasn't lost it behind the kind of the glaze. Absolutely. And to be fair, when you mentioned to me about the kind of the, va the varnish on it, I did struggle to actually see any erosion of quality because yeah. we're, we're not seeing that at all. So ab absolutely brilliant. Ball a ballpark figure for this size, 26, 16? Um, it's a that's a twenty four by twenty, oh, 20 I 20. think, and I think that comes out with the fine art finish around about one hundred and fifty pounds. Okay, so yeah, uh, you know it, it's a product. So mm. if I was a pro photographer and I'm using the times five equation. Definitely then you're kind of working around that. Yeah. So it's more of the kind of the top eight. Uh, Definitely. End of I mean, that's including VAT as well. So okay, yeah. brilliant. So um, I, I think for the fine, the fine art, the boudoir photographer, still life photographer, I think we Definitely. absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. nail it. Yeah. Um, and we, we have some, uh, Jay's just in the background, you can't see him today, guys. But Jay, we have some amazing fine art photography going through our print clear teats. Mm. And uh, I know how that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, kind of okay, brilliant. Let's look at the kind of the other end of the scale. So let's Absolutely. look at Fiesta, shall we? Yep. Do you want to just grab that? I'll grab that for you. Yeah, Thank brilliant. you very much. Um, so let's look at Fiesta. Um, it's a kind of a multicolored product, yeah? Yes. Not everybody's taste. Uh, I tend to sell this in black or white, mainly in black. You know, mm. That's just yeah, yeah, my yeah, kind yeah. of choice of things, really. Um, diff a different end of the spec uh, spectrum in price. So. 150 for this, similar kind of product size and price? Similar sort of product size, you're looking at about 73, uh, 68 sort of thing, uh, depending on 
whether you go for singles, double cut mounts, Mount. we've got you know um, non-reflective acrylic upgrades and stuff like that as well. Cool. Um, I think this is perfect. It's perfect for lots of small images, in mm. fact, especially if they're using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be absolutely brilliant. The things where you can do it. Talk us through this product a little bit. Yeah, well, like you say, it, it, it's designed based. We offer it because you can make some good margin on it. It is a lower price point frame, but there's so much versatility with it. Like you said, the white and the black is, you know, makes up predominantly the largest amount of sales we do for this frame. But there is a lot of fun colours in that, and it's one of the ones where it really stands out with a lot of options for this. So really beautiful matte finish, really, really soft, smooth, actually. It's almost like a powder coated finish on the frame, but hardwood, so a really good quality, really, uh, un, you know, it's not going to warp. So um, no pulp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all solid wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Who, who's the biggest buyer of this, do you think? We sell a lot, like you say, of lifestyle photographers, um, a lot of newborn photography uh, go with this. And like you say, stuff for selling in, um, clients' walls for gallery walls and stuff like that. And because you can choose different colours, you can mix and match and, and, and sort of play around and make something really creative with it. I think it's got a good commercial lab application as well, though, isn't it? If you're a commercial photographer looking to sell into new coffee shops or whatever it be. a particular colour scheme or something like that. Yeah, 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 things yeah, like that. I don't think really. Great. Uh, let's talk about wedding photography for a minute. Can we just grab that small little um, mm. uh, image? Is, is that okay? Absolutely. Because this is a version of the Faro as well, yeah? Yes. So uh, the Faro... Is this the narrow Faro or the Faro Faro? This is the Faro Faro. <laughs> the, uh, the narrow Faro, like you say, we use those in our um, pre-designed wall templates, so multiple collections and stuff like that. So, same sort of profile with this stepped effect here. But again, really cost effective frame, but beautifully made. You know, there's a reason why a lot of labs go for this kind of product uh, with this particular molding because it goes together so well. Mm. You don't get any gaps in the joins. It's a really beautiful finish. And you know, you offer it finished at the back, yeah. ready to hang with a number of different hanging options. We offer twine or uh, frames wire. The, uh, the pegs and stuff like that. So it's just ready to hang up on the client. It, it is our biggest selling product, in mm, fact, in no, black. I'm not, I'm you know, not surprise, surprised. surprise, I'm black. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I love to see these in four, six, sixes, eights yeah, yeah. and nines. They look amazing in a client's home, whether it's wedding, child photography, even adding into them. The great thing about a consistency and a, mold, a molding, mm. not just between suppliers, but the actual manufacturer, yeah. is that you can add to them over the course of the years and they look very, very similar. There's very little that cha uh, yeah, changes, yeah. which is essential for me and I suppose for you as well. Can you? It is, because I mean, we know people will move around and, and, and shop around and stuff like that. What we hope is that obviously you're getting something that is the quality you expect with the service that you expect as well. That's the main thing. And we like to think that we can take on um, independent photographers' concerns and, and, and uh, have like specific profiles set up for these guys. If you want to speak with the print lab, you can speak with the print lab. If you want to speak with framers, you can do. And any sort of tweaks or anything like that that you need making, it's not a problem. But going back to the frame, it's a very versatile frame as well. That's mm. like you say, you can use it for boudoir, you can use it for wedding, you can use it for newborn. I mean, big, you know, multiple image uh, frames and stuff out for newborns, hugely, hugely popular with this. Brilliant. Let's go fine art again, shall we? Because I absolutely yeah. love the image behind you, did you, of the black child? I think it's absolutely, I just wish I'd taken the photograph. Uh, like there's so many on here today, that is just drop dead. Uh, beautiful with it. So we're back into your fine art range again. Yeah, so the fine art natural. Uh, so this is a standalone product that we have in our wall art section. Um, again, it's with the really textured uh, fine art etch paper uh, with the varnish again. But what we do with this, I mean, this is our best selling standalone product. Is it? Uh, okay. It's again 30 by 24, it's probably around about 149 pounds, 130. Okay, like so we get an extra like size really for this yeah, compared yeah, to the vintage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the vintage, it's a higher price point because of the frame selections that go with it. Um, and you can get a photographic option with the vintage, whereas this is purely fine art. Okay. And we've handpicked the frame options on there. There's probably about 16 different frame options for this product to suit that style of photography and to suit that style of print finish. Do you know, if, if I was a headshot photographer or a commercial photographer, this is what's in my gallery. Something a bit it, different. It, it yeah. would be, uh, if he can or she can shoot like this consistently, mm. that in a gallery, there's not a client that wouldn't book you nope. and a client that wouldn't spend. I, I was kind of fascinated by even the headshot photographers who photograph young actors and everything mm. else with it. They don't really sell wall, wall art. No. It, it's just kind of, no, 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 we just sell you 10, sell 20 digital, digital images, we'll retouch them and go away and else. 
I mean, that, I would add my signature that straight away and you can only buy it from me and, and that is it. Yep. I, I would absolutely litter. I, I like to present like a gallery. So mm. we do have these little kind of shelves as you can see in the background here. Yeah. So it's a quick way for us to kind of, uh, you know, not a reveal wall. I hate the saying of that, but it is a reveal wall. Yeah. But it's also a great way for us to actually put new products up, to look at them when we do focus groups with people, looking at new product design and things what do you really. Think, yeah, yeah. Uh, and what do you think? We get it off the shelf, we give them to talk about it and everything else. And it's not just, I've always believed in the focus group with the consumer. Yes. It's not with a photographer, because the photographer goes, oh, I love this, I want three of these, yes, and, and how much are they? Okay, I'll buy the cheaper one. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they, they're always like that, isn't it, yeah? Uh, I, I kind of randomize it, I didn't mean that, but I mean the same, you know, yeah. it's kind of, I want that, I can't afford it, so I buy something else. Um, but it, it's making sure that it fits with you and Definitely. your kind of look and brand and yeah. else with it and things really. But I've always believed in the focus group of the consumer, not of the photographer. Hugely. Because the photographer at times can be out of touch with what the consumer's gonna want and things. I mean, I think, I think you have to have an element of you've got to love what you're offering, but that has to go hand in hand with it's got to sell. Yeah. You know, it's got to be priced right, it's got to be, something that is going to go into people's homes. So you have to keep up with things like interior design trends and stuff like that, because that that's what you're offering. Um, in terms of offering it as a finished product, they're buying your photography, but it has to go up on their, in their home. So like, that's why it's great to show them in, in person or in like things like Pro Select or something like that, just to give them an idea. Yeah. But it has to be a click of the button. You know, putting stuff on a red wall is yeah. difficult, isn't it, you know? When we see like your acrylic round mm, there, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the exact product name on that one? Uh, that's an acrylic sphere. But, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. But when you see that, that can hang anywhere. Absolutely, yeah. Because it doesn't have any wrapping. In There's other no words, distraction, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and that will hang on any wall, obviously, can either color clash or color complement with it. Whereas when we start to actually put some of the other wrappings, the frames around them, they start to really, you know, color on a wall becomes almost a difficulty, isn't Hugely, it? Hugely, yeah. yeah. Um, Pretty much, you've walked around my galleries and you know pretty much everything that's white and we yep. kind of fe feature it with colour. Um, but when you visit photographers' studios over the years, you mm. must have walked into play a place and gone, have you got no taste? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> because you could have come to Mark Fabon Photography, 1986, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you probably weren't born then, uh, but basically um, you could have... You weren't born then, were you? No, I was. Oh, I was, just I about. Was, I was a Stratton 3 role. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, but you could have gone there, and I basically had, well, if you look at the shells, pretty much, that's what it looked like. Yeah. Different size photographs in different frames, all over the place, fill the wall. Yeah. It took me about five years to understand that I, as I should show images, should be more like a gallery does. So Definitely. if you add perceived value with that more artistic element, it's going to make a lot yeah. more sense in things, really. I mean, being able to, pay, obviously, you, you talked about before, finding stuff that sells, but creating a brand around your business as well and offering something that fits within that brand, you're normally going to be like tunneling down into something that your brand should be something that's uh, aspirational and should be something that will sell into these people's homes and lifestyle and stuff like that. So the product should match that. Yeah. Um, but if you can tie them together, like you say, this is great to show the, the images off, but it's not a display that you would put some um, customer in front of and say, this could be your home, because it's not going to look like no, that. No, it's not their home, yeah, yeah. Really, no. And, and in the sales room, it must feel like their home Definitely. just a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Really. Right, let's, uh, let's go to my core. Yeah. yeah. So you do a product you know very, very similar to pretty much uh, what we have all around our gallery. And, and I've got to say, if I hadn't done already, the photography that you're showing here from some of your clients, uh, photographers from around UK and Europe, it's I mean, we're, we're really lucky to have a fantastic customer base, uh, some really incredibly talented photographers. Um, so this is it not- It never gets boring through the lab. Yeah, yeah, no, I bet, you know, and uh, th this is not my photograph. It's not even in my black and white style, mm -hmm. but the presentation is it. Yeah. So, in other words, I like an either black or an off-white black frame. Yep. This is this dark grey. I love a single or double mount. That's exactly exactly what here. I like acrylic on the front mm -hmm. as a rule because I call it home safe. Yes, absolutely. So your stand, your standard frames are they glass or acrylic? It's acrylic for the exactly okay. same reason. I mean, it's home safe. It's a fantastic uh, way of putting it. But 
a lot of our products are going into homes with young children yeah. and stuff like that. Home safety. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it coming with it. And uh, I noticed on here you've got a, sig a signature. Yes, yeah. Is that a digital one? Because It is, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, so the uh, photographer can upload that, place the order, and then as they move forward, any frame print that they want to go for, it's just a little drop-down option. They can add their own signature in pen or pencil to that. So I know you're uh, predominantly a professional lab, so yes. you only deal with professional photographers. That's right, yeah. What deems a professional? So I'm shooting weddings and I do a few portraits on the side. Uh, can I still come in? Yeah, it's somebody whose income is based upon photography. If it, you know, if you are making money from photography, and that is your that is your profession, that's your you know, what's a professional? A profession. Yeah. But yeah, it's somebody who's making money from the industry. So somebody who's doing fine art photography in landscapes and everything else can still come absolutely, in yeah. And I mean, we have a lot of artists actually use the service as well, rather than just photographers. You know, yeah, yeah. because it is a, you know a, a viable business. Um, any tips for kind of the budding photographer about what to start off with product-wise to start selling? Um, again, look at what's going in interiors. Uh, look at what's selling uh, with photography. I don't know if you if you find the same sort of thing, but from our world, the lab sort of thing, we see a lot of influence come through from the states. Um, so have a look. You can maybe get ahead of the curve a little bit with that. Thin aluminiums, thin wooden profiles and stuff like that are very popular at the moment as well. That's really strange you're saying about the States because I don't see any influence coming in through from the States really, yeah. in product. It's, well, it's I would say more look at the, the China, look, I'm on about the Hong Kongs, yeah, yeah. the kind of the real developing, the Thai, uh, the Taiwanese, Australian market for The Australian market, Brad, very much. Sweden, actually, yeah, yeah. I mean, the world of Ikea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have said America, funny enough. I would right. have said America if you're only looking for that fine art product yep. this isn't american yeah. this is timeless art kind of this is gallery level, mm. isn't it and and the one thing i love about the states is that photography in the states is considered an art it's valued it's, it's very valued, valued and it has a yeah. high value you know yeah. the street photography the kind of the lifestyle photography and things you not not just portraiture that i'm involved mm. involved in but they actually buy photography but well, they've got the obviously. heritage of it like ansel Adams and stuff like that you know it's in their sort of DNA almost. Yeah, I was, I was lucky enough for years to work over on the east, uh, west, uh, west coast of America, near uh, Corvallis and kind of oh, okay, Port, yeah, yeah. Portland and all that kind of area. And I was lucky enough to go to a few of the kind of the weekend street mar mar markets. Yeah, yeah. Now down in Cardiff, your street market would be, you know, three knockoff CADs for, for, for five yeah, quid yeah. or whatever it would be. Uh, but no, I mean, there were two or three photographers selling fine art photography street photography and I ask the closest we we can get I think to that that I see um, I've definitely seen several very similar in Dub in Dublin yep. where they're looking at these beautiful black and white photographies of Dublin but I wondered again if it's just designed for the tourist going rather than the, the local collector mm -hmm. because Possibly. I see it in Bath my son's got a restaurant in Bath yeah and we go to Bath quite a lot um, and I start to pay which is really kind of, kind it's of not weird on. it's not on anyway um, but we go there and there's this one photographer that's there every time we go. I'm not sure if he's there at present, actually, with C19. Obviously, he's closed at present, so he yeah. wouldn't be. But um, he's there. And his photography from around Bath mm. is just magnificent. And I just know, if I was a street photographer or a location photographer at Bath, <laughs> I'd move. Because <laughs> that guy is he's really got red yeah. hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, yeah. he should have. kind of. But again, is it being sold to the, to uh, the tourist instead of the low locals with it yeah and i mean it's an interesting thing because a lot of the time some of this amazing photography gets lost on a, a, a site like shutterstock or, or something like that and you you're selling digitals of it and stuff you know the, actually in newcastle there's a fantastic craft market that's actually on one of the old iron wrought bridges in um there's a park called jesmond uh, and it, it's beautiful and there's, there's you know there's some great photographers selling landscape street photography and stuff there it's a bit like um Camden Town down in London, okay. so, you know that kind of thing. Uh, Cooler than Cardiff, you mean? Well, I mean, there's some cool <laughs> bits of Cardiff. I mean, down by the. Uh, we yeah. love the diff. It's okay. Yeah. Don't knock it. Yeah, we love the diff. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's photography needs to be not on a hard drive. Yes. It needs to be on a wall. It needs, it needs to, to be in an album or whatever it would be. I was saying, like it's heirloom products. You know, yeah, you want definitely. That for later generations. Look, Alex, really great digital lab uh, based in the northeast of England. Um, have a look online. Your website address is digitallab.co.uk. And I'm sure they'll put the link down in below. Any questions, I'm sure that Alex will be watching them and kind of following up on the academy. Uh, I don't think we've got any questions live there, Jay. Have we, have we got some? 
Jay is nodding to me, but he is three minutes behind in questions. Anything at all, Jay? No, I asked a couple of, but I just wanted a bit of reiteration on those who came, but I know them now, so I don't know. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, so uh, if you didn't hear Jay before, he said uh, he, he's answered a few of the questions that were covered in about the names of the frame range. Jay. Alex, I'd shake your hand, but it's still not allowed. Virtual, uh, one virtual yeah, kind yeah. of thing with it. Uh, good luck with all this. Uh, I can't much. wait to actually see well. some of your products actually on our walls here, Brilliant. actually down at the Academy. So for Mark Claghorn and the Photographer Academy, to Alex and Digital Lab, we'll see you on the next one. Take Thank care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.